Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you are well. Today I want to share with you my very first painting of dolphins and my very first time attempting to paint a much more detailed water surface. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Recently, I painted a painting of two dolphins on water surface. The photo reference is very beautiful, but the amount of detail of refractions and reflections is a bit intimidating. After I actually start painting it though, I realized it wasn't that difficult if you have a little bit of patience. All you really need to do is to take some time to analyze and study the reference image. So let's take a look at the process of this painting and I'll try to explain the property of a detailed water surface. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at the process of this painting. Now you might think to paint something very complex, you need a very complex drawing. But actually I only did the drawing of dolphins. All the details of reflections and refractions, I leave them for paintings later on. To me, part of the fun with the painting is the unpredictability and the ability to be a little bit spontaneous. So if you do a drawing that is a little bit too tight, draw every single liquid pool shape, then I'll be making a coloring book. And that's not something that I want. So just did a relatively accurate drawing for the dolphin and stay loose for other parts of the drawing. And now I'm using a little bit of masking fluid pen just to block out some of the highlight that I want to preserve. Because as you can see in the photo, some of the reflective highlights, they are pretty small. So if I want to do a big wash, I will have to paint around them. And that's not going to be easy. And I will be risking myself to have a dirty wash. So using masking fluid is a pretty good choice for this one. So the first wash is just a very pale looking watery blue which i mix with cobalt turquoise cobalt blue and a little bit of cerulean blue and before it's dry when it's still a little bit moist i paint some soft ripples when i'm too wet so i use a little bit thicker paint and add some color into it and i just went ahead and add some sort of a warmer gray to the dolphin even though it is moist, even though all the shape that I paint will be soft shape, I can already give it a little bit of value in colors. Keep in mind, watercolor dry a lot lighter, especially when you do wet on too wet. So all the colors that I put in right now, they will fade off quite a bit. Now some paper preserves color better than others, but in general, no matter what paper you use, they will always dry lighter. So now I clean my palette so I can start with cleaner color and now I do my second wash for the dolphin. Now the surface is still a little bit moist so the edges are still soft. So the edges are still soft which means that you want to use a thicker mixture. I spray a little bit of water on the paper just to keep it moist a little bit longer. I like to work wet on to wet because there's a lot of subtle color changes from warm to blue on the dolphin. So the dolphin skin itself is more of a gray color, but the sun will make the gray a little bit warmer. And because of the reflective light from the water surface, there will be some cool color on them as well. So now I'm starting to draw the dolphin underneath the water. It's quite a bit of detail and is very distorted because of the refraction. So I take a look at the photo and I try to replicate what I see. But at the same time, I really try to remind myself that this is still one single shape. It just got broken up a little bit because of the refractions. So even though I paint dolphin the first time, the basic principle of painting watercolor doesn't really change for me. I still try to connect as many shapes as possible. They're just a little bit more organic and broken up. And it's also very important to vary in your brush strokes a little bit. If you only have small brush strokes everywhere, it's going to look tedious and they will be less interesting. And at the end, you're actually starting to lose detail if you try to paint details everywhere. 
So it's a very conscious effort. Just because there's a lot of details, a lot of small shapes, you need to make the conscious effort not to paint every shape the same. That's how you keep the painting fresh and interesting. So as you can see, the painting is starting to dry. So every shape that I paint in right now, they will be hard shape. And as I do that, I still try to connect the shape as much as possible. So from the left dolphin, I connect the shape to the right. And I start to add another layer. So we slowly define the shape and form of dolphins. And you can still soften edges when you are painting on the dry surface. Just go over the edge that you just painted with a clean damp brush and you can usually soften the edge. Continue the shape down and start to paint the dolphin on the right underneath the water. So the same thing, I start to paint all the refractions. But as you can see, as I paint a larger shape, I will try to change the color in between just so that we can have some different warm and cool within that shape to make this painting a little bit more interesting. And if you look at the photo, it does have a lot of subtle changes of warm and cool colors because the color of the sun and the water and the light is actually quite complex when it comes to the real world. So we can try to suggest that in our painting as well. And I feel like watercolor is a very good medium for that because it blends the color very naturally and effortlessly if your timing is right. So I'm doing a second layer for the water surface because as you can see, the color fades off quite a bit. So I did a glaze on top, which is also a good chance to clean up the edges of the dolphins which is also a good chance to clean up the edges of dolphins to define your silhouette a little bit more use a big brush use a big brush because you want to have a nice clean wash and i also use opportunity to do another layer on the dolphins the one on the right is back fin is casting a shadow on its back even though it's under the water, you can still see that light and shadow. And now I start to go a little bit darker, start to paint the darker part of the dolphin. So I put some paint on it and I will soften the edge with a damp brush. That being said, you don't want to soften everything. Some hard edges are still needed, especially the skin of dolphin is actually kind of shiny. So a smooth, shiny surface is more glossy and it has sharper reflections of the surrounding so some hard edges will really show that so what makes a painting believable is your understanding of its surface textures so that's why i leave some hard edges on the right of the dolphin and as i move down i start to separate the area above water and underneath the water so if we make this photo larger and study it, we will see what's going on. First of all, the contrast between the surface above the water and underneath the water are different. Things underwater has less contrast because of the water surface. And even though water is transparent, it is still a surface. It will absorb the light as it passes through. So things underneath the water usually is a little bit less visible. So the first element we need to introduce is the difference in contrast. And on top of that, because of the water surface is very reflective, it will have some bright highlights. And those highlights are usually the reflections of the light source. In this case, I believe it is a sun. But because of the water moving and stuff, it's going to break up that reflection. That's why you see some very bright dots of highlights. And lastly, because of the surface tension, the water is not going to be completely flat. There will be a little bit of bumpiness on the edges where the merge above the water surface. So that's going to create that very subtle transition of light and some dark above the surface. So if you combine all three elements, you can make a very believable painting of water surface.
So as you paint, study your reference carefully. And I also believe even before you start painting, you should take enough time to take a look at the reference, really study it, really analyze it before you start painting. Don't just start to paint something because you think it's pretty. Why is it pretty? Why does it attract you? What do you want to convey in your painting? Those are all very important questions you want to ask yourself. And if you're really sure you are going to paint the subject, really spend some time to look at it. Look at the shape, the color, and the physical quality of the subject that you're about to paint. I believe if you I believe if you give your I believe if you I believe if you spend enough time to take a look at your subject and study them, you are also paying respect to the subject you're about to paint. And if you really like the subject and that's the reason that you want to paint, that means it definitely deserves your respect and your attention for just a little bit longer. So now I'm starting to paint a little bit darker. So that means another layer. This painting really calls for that. It needs a little bit more layering than most of my other paintings because the amount of detail that is there. But again, as I paint those details, I also try to remind myself trying to look at the big picture. So step back once in a while and refocus yourself, readjust your eyes to see the big shape instead of focusing on tiny little shapes. So continue to paint, adding more darker shapes. It's the first time I paint dolphins and it was pretty fun actually. In the beginning, I saw the detail is going to really be the end of me but I actually started to find that quite cathartic and because I don't give myself the pressure that I have to copy the photo one to one it's actually very fun to do so I will also encourage you to try different subject you might surprise yourself some subject that you might have no interest doing but maybe try to paint once or twice you might actually like it so some people might suggest you to stick with the subjects that you are good at and that's what you want to be known for. However, I am not doing watercolor full time. I am not a full time watercolor artist. So I don't really have the pressure that I can only stick with a certain subject. I paint whatever I want and whatever makes me happy. So if you are not doing this full time, if you're just painting for fun, find subjects that will be interesting to you, that will bring you joy. Anything that makes you happy when you paint is a good subject. So here I try to introduce a little bit more contrast on the edge of the water just to reinforce the concept of the water surface. So it's all about understanding what you're painting and try to push it a little bit more so that it will show up in your painting. So even though my painting is not going to be one to one to the photo, when people look at the painting, they can still tell what I'm trying to say. So continue another wash to the dolphin on the left. And I try to connect the shape, soften the edge as needed, adding some more dark and connect that to the eye area. Again, connect the shape just so that it will look a little bit more cohesive. The overall picture will read better. Even though this painting has a lot of details, you still want to connect the shape so the big picture works. So at this stage, most of the painting is done. I'm just adding some more darker details. They are very minor, just to make the painting has a little bit more punches. It's easy to overdo this though. So you really need to be mindful how many detail you put in and how many dark details specifically. 
you want to put into the place that really matters, not to start flattening the painting. And now I try to add just a little bit more water ripples. They are just slightly darker than the water surface I have right now. Just because I want to make the water surface looks a little bit more graphical. So that's why I decided to emphasize on those a little bit more. And bring those cool color down and cover up. And bring those cool color down and glaze over part of the dolphin underneath the water. Which will further separate the surface above water and under the water. Watercolor is such a natural medium when it comes to painting transparent things like that because watercolor's nature is transparent. So if you use it well, it can really bring that beautiful translucent quality that you want, especially for painting like these. It's a water surface, it's translucent, and watercolor is just such a perfect medium for this. And lastly, just a few more darker ripples in the water to make it look a little bit more bumpy. The dolphins are swimming in the water. The water is not sitting still. So adding a little bit of stuff like that will convey that the water is moving, even though we're looking at a static painting. And here is the finished painting. I peel off the masking fluid so the bright highlight will show. I really enjoy this painting and I love how it turns out. So this two dolphins sort of kissing is actually a great subject for Valentine's Day. So I wish you a great Valentine's Day. Whether you have a partner to celebrate with or not, I wish you have a great day. This is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. I'll see you next time.